Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Victor Senior High School to tip off this basketball season at home for the first time. I'm Michael Ricky alongside Ethan Adrid, and Ethan, this Victor crowd is ready to party like it's 1978. This is the first, last year was the first time they won sectionals since 1978, and it's the first ever state run in program history. Just talk about the testament of that group. You know, you hear it from the, the players and the coaches every interview, every day. They always talk about that, get better at 1% every day, that mentality that they have. And I think that it displayed because you saw as they got better throughout the season. They didn't peak at the beginning. They didn't peak in the middle. They peaked at the end. They beat good teams. They beat bad teams bad. And they moved on, and they did something that's never been done here before at Victor High School. That's exactly what they did. And tonight, they're playing against the Penfield Patriots. Penfield, 3-1 and one, coming into this game. And Victor, 1-1. One and one. Only two games, they've kind of had a little bit of a break in between. It's been one full week since they've played against Webster Thomas. But this is a bad matchup against the two big players in this one, Garrett Clare and Trevor Hofer. Hofer and Clare both scored 31 against Webster Thomas. How unlikely that really is, but that's the matchup we're going to be looking at tonight as those two are going to go after it in the point in the point category. Sure, you mentioned they both play the same position. They're going to be going head-to-head -head all night. I'm interested to see. I, I, I haven't seen Hoffer play, Hoffer play that much. I know Garrett's style of play. He's slow. He's methodical with the ball. He's got an unbelievable basketball IQ. I'm interested to see how the mashup goes. Well, we're all ready for the tip-off here inside the Carl A. Palumbo Gymnasium. And you hear it, the Devil Den, the Victor crowd. They have been waiting for this home game for a long time. And right away, it's Hofer and the Patriots off to a 2-0 lead. You know, it was an easy bucket, Michael, right off the rip. Claire over to Hopkins. RJ on the wing. Leonard up top. Here's Owen Dake. He's got an expanded role now in this Victor basketball team. Hopkins on the drive and draws the foul. He does that a lot. You will see him draw fouls. You will see him give up fouls. That's Griffin Hopkins, his play. You saw the quick first step. You know, he took him right to the lane. It's a quick hesitation followed by a, a quick drive. So two shots now for Griffin at the free throw line. First one, no good. You know, Michael, I'm interested to see how, Vis how Victor shoots from the line. You know, they almost shot as well from the three-point line as they did from the free throw line in their last matchup against Webster Thomas. Hopkins can't convert on the free throws. So now it's Natale and the Patriots coming up. Here's Hofer with the ball, Claire guarding him. Oh, near a turnover. And now the three for the Patriots. It's good. Three-pointer by Patrick Emling. You know, it's a missed opportunity by Victor. They had an easy turnover, and they let him have it back. So Victor off to another slow start, just like you saw in the Webster-Thomas game with a quick deficit early. RJ over to Dake. Hopkins at the top. He's going to reset the Victor offensive attack. Finds Dake down low to Leonard. He's the big man. Leonard gets blocked, but with his own rebound... Gets it back, working it to the right side, and he can't get the layup to go. Man, that Rebound like Natale. Great matchup this, tonight. Natale over. There's Zarzicki. Natale with a mismatch on Leonard. They're going to drive. And a rebound by Dake. And here goes Hopkins. He's good in transition. He's going to take it himself. There's a call, and it's an offensive foul. You know, there it is, Michael. You spoke about it. He got a foul on the last possession, and he got and he drew he drew one possession before. You saw the Victor bench right there. They acted like that was a blocking foul for a minute. I thought it was a three point play and a technical issued early to Coach Tyler Roberts. A surprising thing to see for this Victor team that is so disciplined. You know that is interesting. He always keeps his cool. You mentioned he's disciplined. I've I've been watching him for years, and I've never seen anything of that manner out of him. Uncharacteristic to say the least. So, wow, when you thought Victor almost converted a three-point play with Hopkins, it's a foul, and it's Hofer at the line for the Patriots. You know, depending on how this next possession goes, following the free throw, this, is, this could be a timeout, an early timeout from Victor. Hofer's shot is good. So 
So Hofer takes full advantage of the technical as he makes both free throws. And this is a kid, last game, in a loss to Fairport. He scored 16 points. He is the scorer for this Penfield offense. Yeah, it's obvious early. He's shown it already. So because of the technical foul, Patriots get the ball after those two free throws as well. Here's Natale, working against Hopkins, finds Hofer. Hopkins swishes on to Hofer. McCarthy. Here's Arsicki. There's Hofer. Hofer versus Claire. On the outside, they go down low to McCarthy. There's a foul. Offensive. On the Patriots. You have to take advantage of this right now. You need a bucket. You're down seven early. Momentum needs to switch. And last game, this is where you saw Garrett Claire really make a big time three to get the Blue Devils their first bucket, get them in a little bit of a momentum. We see what they can do here. Hopkins taking it himself, and he traveled. Early undisciplined basketball from Victor. And it's kind of a similar start to the beginning of the Webster-Thomas game in the sense that their offense couldn't really get anything going. Webster-Thomas came out hot shooting the ball, and that's exactly what Penfield's done. They're trying to redo that game plan. Claire with the steal. Finds Dake. Dake going to take it. And there's two. Nice pass by Garrett Clare. And Victor's on the board. 7-2 now. It's a gorgeous full-court pass. Unbelievable vision. Natale to Zarsicki. Here's Emling to McCarthy. Hofer on the wing. He switches. Now it's Leonard. Hofer with a deep three. It won't go. Rebound. Dake. Dake pushing it now. Finds Leonard. Victor with the fast break. Leonard shot up and in. And there's and one. Wow, I, you know, that was a bold play by Hofer to shoot from what, what could have been 25 feet. He had a mismatch down low with his big man on Garrett Clare, and he passed it up for a deep three, and Garrett, and get, they comp, they execute. Yeah, perfectly. Leonard here with a chance for three. And this is how Victor wants to play, Ethan. They really want to push the pace, get down the floor fast to try to get their offense going. Free throws not going down for the Blue Devils early as Leonard misses, so it's still 7-4. Now it's Natale or McCarthy to Hofer. Again, the mismatch. Leonard on Hofer. Zarsicki. And there's a turnover for the Patriots. It's Blue Devils' ball as it just went off the hands of Jacob Natale. You know, the they junior. missed that mismatch once again. Player was guarding the big man down low. So after a lackluster start for the Blue Devils and an undisciplined start, they could take the lead on this, or take not take the lead, they could tie the game up on this possession. Finding Claire, he drives inside. Oh, and he gets rejected by McCarthy, but it's going to retain with the Blue Devils. Hopkins, we're going to get tally on the switch over. Oh, and there's the foul, no basket. They won't count it, and Hopkins goes to the line. Nasty crossover by Griffin right there. Well, I, it was beautiful, but I have to say that McCarthy already has two blocks. He's got one on Leonard, and he's got one on Claire. He's making that paint real hard to work through. They inbound it to RJ on the outside. A three. It does not go in as it rolls around on the rim. Finding Johnson again. Claire down low. It's good. Garrett Claire using his size. 7-6. Blue Devils with six unanswered. Well, this is the swing they needed to prevent using that timeout. Zarsicki over to McCarthy. And this is the first bucket of the game for James Steinbeiser as he just came into the game. And the Patriots answer the Blue Devils. Three minutes and 50 seconds left of this first quarter. Hopkins driving, draws another foul. You know, Hopkins seems frustrated that the calls are being on the floor, but he's getting the other guards, the guys guarding him into foul trouble. It's still a positive here. No threes yet in this game taken by Garrett Clare. He is their sharpshooter. He had seven threes in their last game against the Titans, and Owen Dake could not handle that pass, and it's a turnover for Victor. 
as Colin Kubrich comes into the game for Owen Dake and Brody Secker coming in for RJ. Christian Zarzicki taking it up. Hofer guarded by Claire. McCarthy back to Zarzicki. Zarzicki down low to McCarthy. McCarthy back out to Zarzicki for three. It's good. You see the they finally utilized that matchup. They threw it down low to the mismatch, and he kicked it back out for an easy three. So there's two threes already for the Patriots, one by Emling and now Zarzicki, and it's 12-6. Hopkins drives inside on Steinbeiser and blocked again by McCarthy. He has been everywhere on defense. Hopkins not really in control, but draws another foul. We've seen four fouls this game. All four have involved Griffin Hopkins. <laughs> good and bad. Good and bad. A lot more good than bad, though. That is true. And that's something that's really big to see from him because, you know, he's a guy that really can get in foul trouble early, and he means so much to this Blue Devil squad. You don't want to see him sitting on the bench in the first quarter, especially early in the game. His explosiveness is uncanny on this roster. Let's see if he can capitalize here. You know, Victor started the game 0 for 3 from the line. And that make it 0 for 4, Ethan. It's Hopkins' first free throw doesn't go. They shot just 62% from the line last game. And look at Penfield in their last game. Shot 53% from the free throw line. Both teams not really shooting it well from the charity strike. Rebound by Jackson Green as he checks into the game for the Patriots along with Michael Moxley. This one is fought for in a jump ball as Hopkins got in there on Emling. And it's Blue Devil basketball. Good defense there by Victor. Shen is checking into the game for Griffin Hopkins. Hopkins clearly frustrated with the referees in this one early, despite being on the better end of most of the calls. I think he's been he's been looking for all his fouls to be shooting fouls, and the refs have disagreed. They've been calling a lot of them on the floor. He seems visibly frustrated over by the water cooler. You see Coach Roberts in his ear. Doing what he does best, calm his teammates down. So 12-6. Here's Brody Secker to Leonard. Finding Claire. Steinbeiser on Claire. Claire finds Secker for three. It won't go. Shannon knocked it around. And Brendan Shannon cannot get it, but James Steinbeiser can. So the Patriots now with possession again, and it's Hofer at the top. Emling outside to Moxley. Here's Jackson Green. He's a big body. This one's stolen by Shannon. The junior, Brendan Shannon, pushing the pace, finding Claire. Garrett, layup's good. There's an easy bucket. That's what Victor should be looking for. Brendan Shannon, a guy you haven't seen play a lot early in the season for the Blue Devils. Now Emling on the drive by Kubridge, and a travel. As I was saying, Shannon, he's a younger kid, played on JV last year, and this is his first year on varsity, and taking advantage of minutes, I could say. That's exactly what you're looking for coming off the bench, a steal. You push the floor, and you find your star player for an easy bucket. You couldn't ask for anything else. So it's Hopkins. Oh, what a pass by Dake to find Claire. Claire's free throw layup, excuse me, won't go. And now Claire getting back on defense fast. To guard Hofer. Steinbeiser. Picked away by Claire almost for a second there. Steinbeiser re-grabs possession and he gets a foul. That one's gonna go on Kubrich. Dake hit his hand straight up in the air. Colin Kubrich really comes in for his strong defense. Got in a little bit of foul trouble last game with four. You're gonna look for him to stay out of it and be a strong defender for this Blue Devils team. Sure. He's got the length. It's what you need. He's got the aggressiveness, too. Steinbeiser at the line. First free throw is good. Oh, you're seeing it early, Michael. Four for four from the, or three for three from the line, excuse me, for Penfield. 0 for five for Victor, and we have a five-point differential. Rocco Barberi checks into the game for the Patriots, and Nick Leonard back in for Colin Kubrich.
So a minute 33 left to go in this opening quarter. With Steinbeiser at the line, a second free throw will not go. Rebound Hopkins, he got up. And a foul on Barberi. He checks in and immediately picks up a foul. Who else? Who else would be going to the line for Victor right now? And so now, already six fouls by the Patriots. And Griffin Hopkins at the line. Let's see if the Blue Devils can actually make their free throws here. There's the first one. Hopkins second won't go. So it's 13-9 with Hofer leading the charge for the Patriots. Steinbeiser guarded by Hopkins. And there's a reach. He's sure not going to be happy with that one. Here's that early foul trouble you talked about. Two fouls in the first quarter. And they're going to take him out. And it's almost like you have to. You Two fouls in the opening quarter. He's a guy you got to have in the game down the stretch. And I agree with Coach Roberts taking him out early as you can't really have your team be hurting late in the game when it really matters most. Yeah, I mean, it, it's ju we're just barely getting into this game. Drive by Hofer, he's stuck underneath. Good D by Justin Rosello as he checks in. And it's a turnover for the Patriots, Blue Devils ball. You know, it may not seem like it because the lead hasn't been cut that much, but the Patriots offense has stalled a little bit at the end of this first quarter. Still no threes yet for this Blue Devils team to hit so many of them last game. And this one's stolen away by Jackson Green. He's pushing the pace. Green! traveled wow that is an uncanny mistake you see in high school basketball easy breakaway you know it almost looks like he thought about dunking it there and then yeah. he caught himself almost halfway up and it caused him to take that extra step so victor catches a break as it looked to be a easy path to the bucket for penfield instead the score stays 13-9 shannon down low to leonard Barberi guarding him. Stolen away by Green again. Now it's Hofer with Shannon coming to defend. And it's good defense by Shannon, but Green on the putback for the Patriots. 15-9. Penfield leads it. 25 seconds left in this first quarter. You can just imagine Victor is going for a last shot here to end the first. Absolutely. You don't want to give them any more chances at scoring here. Claire comes all the way over to us. Claire on the crossover, drives inside, and they call an offensive foul. First of the game on Garrett, Garrett Claire. The refs are staying involved in this one, Michael. They're not really letting them play. This is exactly what you talked about. You know, it's already a six-point lead. You don't want to give them any extra momentum going into the next quarter. Kubert and Secker back in the game now to close out the first quarter with 5.8 seconds left. But Penfield's going to be able to get a shot off. Easy. you got six seconds. I want, I'm interested to see how far up Sucker presses here. They're looking to get it to Hofer. Hofer driving on Johnson. Drives inside. Gets it off. It won't go. 15-9 is the score. After one. Here inside the Carl A. Palumbo Gymnasium. On CR Sports.
So we're back to start off the second quarter. Victor's got to shoot the three ball. They have to convert at the free throw line and they have to shoot the three ball if they want to get back into this game. Penfield is completely fine taking the two points every possession. So Moxley on the inbound to Zarzicki. Back over to Moxley. Claire on the defense. A wide open three for Zarzicki. It won't go. Rebound Claire. Garrett Claire pushes the pace, finding Colin Kubrick. Kubrick on the drive. His layup is good. So Victor starts off the scoring in the second quarter. Seen it early. It's the transition game for Victor right now. Active defense by Secker out front. You want to see Victor look at the adjustments early as they're pushing it here on defense, trying to cause steals, and that's exactly what they're going to get. It's going to retain with the Patriots, but that's good defense by the Blue Devils. You've seen the guys come off the bench. You've seen Secker just get a steal early. You saw Shannon get a steal early. This is the energy they need. So here's Hofer. Guarded by Brody Secker. Over to Moxley. Dake on the defense. They go over to Claire. And Emling. There's his second bucket. The first one was a three. He's got five points now. Claire driving. Guarded by Hofer. Now they're going to reset to Hopkins. Hopkins drives to his left side. Gets a jump shot off. And a travel is called. Yeah. On Hopkins, and there's a turnover. He took that one extra step. He had the he had the euro, but as he planted on the left, it was it was his third one. Easy call. So 17 to 11 is the score early in the second quarter. Emling just falls down. They're going to call a foul though on Hopkins. There's his third. Up to Roberts. Here he comes. So Johnson checks into the game now for the Blue Devils after a third foul by Griffin Hopkins. And we've said this going into the game, Ethan. This is where he can get into trouble. As talented as he is, this can hurt his team. Moxley on the inbound, finding Zarzicki. Good D by Johnson. Emling on the outside, going back to Zarzicki. Zarzicki spinning. And turning and getting a shot off. It won't go. Rebound, Victor. Pushing the pace. Here's Johnson. Finding Claire. There's the bucket. Unselfish basketball from Johnson there. He saw that Claire had the better opportunity. He lost control of the ball and he moved it on quickly. Victor basketball at its finest. Pushing the pace. Getting an easy transition bucket. And timeout Penfield. So after the Blue Devils... Get good stops on defense, good rebounds. They push the pace with the long passes. And now it's a four-point lead for the Patriots. We'll be back right after this timeout. We're back here after the Penfield Patriots timeout. You know, I haven't seen a lot of success here from the Victor Blue Devils on settled five-on-five -five basketball. They've On offense and on defense, Penfield's won that battle, but it's the transition game that's keeping this only a four-point game. 1,000%, Ethan. It's Natale. Back into the game for the Patriots. Finding Zarzicki. Goes right back to Natale. He's going to shoot the three, and it's good. No, that's two. His foot was on the line. So only two there for Natale. Secker driving inside and he gets blocked again by McCarthy. How many times are we going to say this tonight? Natale pushing the pace, going after the Blue Devils. Arzicki in the corner. Shot fake to the outside. He stepped out of bounds and then Hofer's three would have rimmed right out. That would have been a crazy shot, but it doesn't matter as it's Blue Devil basketball. Well, we've seen both sides have sloppy turnovers, uncaused turnovers. See how that continues out throughout this game. Dake up top to Johnson. 
Driving inside. Kicks it back out to Leonard. Claire still no threes in this contest for him. Victor passing the ball around. Claire down low. Outside, Secker. He can shoot it. And he does. A three for Victor. The first one of the night. And now the Patriots' lead is only three. 19 to 16. Five minutes left in this first half. There's the off the bench scoring. We've seen the Victor Be Blue Devils bring in guys off the bench that have been able to create a spark for them. Zarzicki can't answer on the three. A foul down low by McCarthy. And the Blue Devils with the basketball again. Johnson taking it up for Victor. Dake over to Leonard. Sacker down low to Claire. Claire fights through contact, no call. Claire gets his own rebound and puts it up with the left. I saw him, he looked tired before that possession started and he turned it right on. You saw him flip the switch. As he does so often, high pass caught by Emling, tipped by Dake. Dake now with the ball, pushing the pace, down low, Leonard. He goes up strong, blocked, Claire's right there, it's in. Victor takes the lead, 20 to 19 now, their first lead of the night. Garrett Claire here with 10 of Victor's 20 points throughout the, through the second quarter. Emling down low to McCarthy, kicked outside, Zarzicki a three, answer. The Patriots take the lead now as we go back and forth, 22-20. I believe that's his third three of the game here, Michael. Johnson to Dake to Leonard. Secker all the way across, finding RJ. RJ still with the ball. And Claire now with it in the corner. He's going to shoot the three. His first one is good. Garrett Claire right where he left off last Friday in Webster Thomas. That's seven points on three possessions for Claire. Emling was his foot on the line. Doesn't matter. Rebound Dake. RJ down the court, going fast, loses control of the ball, and it's turned over in the hands of Hofer. Hofer going right after Claire through the contact and finishes it. A three, a chance now for a three-point play for Trevor Hofer. That was a tough bucket. You saw him go right at Claire's chest. He did not shy away from the contact, and he came through, and now he's at the foul line. What a finish by Trevor Hofer. Jackson Green back into the game and Moxley into the game for the Patriots and here comes Brody Burgess a star last year on JV getting his first, min first minutes here tonight against the Patriots and this would finish the three point play and it does so Hofer is now with seven gets it done with the line Claire over to Johnson. Johnson finding Broges in the middle. Kubrich on the outside. Claire back up top to Johnson. Back and forth, Claire and Johnson go. Kubrich in the middle to Burgess, tipped away by Green. He's done that a few times already in this game. When he's been in, Natale looking for Hofer. Hofer, a real deep three. It won't go. Rebound Burgess. Burgess finding Claire. Claire driving it himself. Now going to the outside to Leonard. Claire down low with the Euro. Garrett Claire with a beautiful finger roll. You see the difference in their play styles there, Michael. Hofer took a deep three. Garrett settled for the simple bucket. It's the difference. If Hofer can hit those big threes, that's a sustainable type of play, but he hasn't yet today. And Claire with a near steal back in the hands of Hofer. Johnson trying to get it after it. And the coach is all the way on the floor for the Patriots. He was there at center court calling for a timeout. He was on the logo. That is surprising to me that there wasn't a technical issue there. Timeout Penfield. And you hear the devil then. They agree with me. A surprising no technical. You know you cannot come out that far on the court in any type of basketball game, whether it be high school or college. I have to say, I think three or four Penfield Patriots were at least on the court from the bench on that possession. Wow. And, they, you know, they're discussing it by the scorer's table. 
Here comes the crowd. The crowd's really getting into it tonight. We've seen an early technical on Roberts, a possible technical on, on the Patriots. The Victor student section's filled up quite a bit now, almost to the top of the bleachers. As the JV basketball team gets in there, it really looks more full. And Victor, in this first home tip-off, you know, it's gone back and forth, Ethan. Started off very slow, couldn't really get anything going. And it's been Garrett Clare really resurging the life into these Blue Devils. And that's what you expect. He's the Monroe County Division I Player of the Year in 2023. And he's put in so much work in the offseason. This is exactly what we all thought was going to happen. He's been a dynamic player. He's been a star. And he's in that conversation for AGR Player of the Year. You saw it early, and you could see it on the last possession. The Penfield Patriots were doubling him outside the three-point line. They see that he is 15 of, the, of Victor's 25. He has, I think, uh, 10 of their last 10. The, the ball and the scoring is going through Garrett Clare, and the Patriots have to find a way to stop that if they want to win this game. So you can see now the Patriots coaching staff getting a talking to by the officials. Clearly it's about stepping up to half court. We'll see what the final call is here. It just looks to be an inbound. They're just leaving it at a timeout. So, so a warning issued to Penfield. You know, their coach almost looked like Jamie Dixon there. Longtime Pitt basketball coach, now at TCU. That's one of his trademarks. Walk out on the court, get a timeout going. But nonetheless, it's like Natale for the Patriots. Over to Hofer. Moxley guarded by Kubrich. Johnson guarding Natale. It's Emling to Green. Green driving against Leonard. These are two big guys going after it. No travel called, and now it is. A turnover for Penfield, and with a minute and 46 left in a tie game, it's Victor possession. I think that's the third travel on the Patriots this quarter. Uncharacteristically sloppy basketball. Victor seems to move, have moved on a little bit from that sloppy basketball that you saw early in this game. Dake over to Kubrich on the outside. It's Leonard to Johnson. Johnson back to Dake. You see this Victor ball movement. It's about as good as you're going to see in Section 5. Claire, a real deep three. It won't fall. Rebound Natale. They're trying to figure out this 2-3 zone, Michael. Moxley over to Emling. Emling with a hop step. Moxley, a deep three. Won't fall either. Rebound Leonard. Let's see if Victor can go two for one and get another possession, they would have to go fast here. Dake to Johnson, Johnson to Claire. Ball of movement so good as we've mentioned. They find Kubrich on the inside. And an offensive foul down low on Nick Leonard. I'm not exactly sure where that was called. Couldn't really see it from our vantage point. It's all just some pushing and solving, yeah. 40 seconds, Victor is going to get that next possession with only five seconds if the Patriots take advantage of the full 35 on the shot clock. So 33 seconds left. Emling to Hofer. Hofer trying to slither his way inside and another travel. This is unbelievable. How many travels are we going to see from the Patriots? So Griffin Hopkins back in the game now. They're looking for an offensive spark. They want to take this last shot. They want to bring their best ball handlers on the floor, and that's Claire and that's Hopkins. They've got Johnson out there as well. Victor obviously looking to go into the half with the lead, Ethan. You know, I think about this attack here on this last possession. Do they settle with a Claire three? Or do they try to drive inside with one of their staple plays? It's going to be a clear three, and it won't fall. Rebound Hopkins, the putback. There's a foul as he fell hard to the floor. He grimaces, and this isn't good as he's limping a little bit here. Grabbing that right ankle, it looks like. We hope Hopkins is all right. He seems to be okay. Just maybe a hard bruise on the fall. 
but he got up and he fell down hard. You know, and he popped right back up either. He didn't want to stay on the ground long. And this is his fourth time at the line here through the first half. So, so despite the three fouls, he's in the game here late, gets in there, and that's really what he does. He's a gritty player. He gets up. He goes through contact. And now with a chance to give the Blue Devils a lead into the half. First free throw is good for Hopkins, and it's 26-25, Victor. I'm interested to see what Roberts does with substitutions. Does he bring in his defensive guys here? He's already got Kubrich on the floor. He has Leonard on the floor. He has Dake on the floor. This is going to be a smart move. He's going to bring Secker into the game for Hopkins after this free throw, I believe. There it is. Here's the all-star defensive lineup for the Blue Devils. Only two seconds on the clock. You know it's gonna, what it's going to be, a deep hoe for three. One could imagine. Oh, here it is. It's Steinbeiser. This is not even close. <laughs> oh, he only had two seconds. So 27 to 25. Victor on top in this one. Bring you back side, court side, here at the Carl A. Palomo Gymnasium. First home tip off. Ethan, your assessment for the Blue Devils in the first half of this one. Well, you've heard it all night from us, Michael. They started off slow with sloppy basketball. They couldn't fi finish at the three-point line. They couldn't finish at the foul line. But they figured it out as time is, has, as it has expanded throughout the game. And you saw that Claire with, I believe, two threes in the second half. And they're finding their way. They're trying to work through this 2-3 defense. And I think that they've done that well. And they've ended this half with a two-point lead. Well, it should be a fun one down the stretch. Stay with us here on CR Sports. It's just going to get get better. That's all it is. And watch this halftime thing, a little little something that I made in the, the Victor journalism classes here. The Victor voice. It's a little preview for this one. We're halfway through. 27-25, Victor on top of Penfield on CR Sports. Well, the snow may be on the ground, but the basketballs are definitely in the air. We're here at Victor Senior High School to unveil the banner from the successful 2023 season in which the Blue Devils were state champions for the first time in their school history and sectional champions for the first time since 1978. And you can see it, the crowd is ready to tip off this season at home. Michael Ricky, alongside Carson French and Noah Herniker. Guys, this is an exciting place to be. Blue Devils face off against the Penfield Patriots. Yeah, Penfield lost twice to Victor last year in the regular season. The first matchup they lost by 13. The second matchup they lost by one. They start off this season two road games. They played Aronicoy in the first game and won. And then they'll be here at Victor tonight to face the Blue Devils. And Noah, i got to ask you about the key departures from last season. They lost a lot of seniors, but this is a class. They've worked together for a long time. What do you expect for this Blue Devils team in their first home tip-off? Yeah, I expect it's going to be a good game. As you saw in Niagara last week, they uh, were better than them in every single shooting statistic. They had more rebounds. They had more assists. But what we saw was there was actually zero blocks in that game, and that was a big thing that impacted them. They were lost in the steals and the blocks, so I expect that the defense may take a little bit of a dip, but the offense has been really strong. Yeah, and we're going to talk to the captains of this basketball team, one of the two of them, Garrett Clare and Cam Ryan, later in the show. As you can see, the crowd likes it, and also talking to Coach Tyler Roberts, a place where Victor basketball really hasn't been since 1978. Sectional champions, then state champions. 
Tyler Roberts deserves a lot of credit for that, and he's been a dynamic coach so far in his tenure here at Victor. Yeah, I mean, you look at that run that they went on last year, a couple close games in the semifinal and uh, the quarterfinal that they won, uh, just gritty wins, really gritty wins. Um, but you do lose A.J. Query, who's a three-point threat all season long. You lose Brennan Hopkins, who Noah mentioned before, shot blocker. And then you also lose Ryan Dodge, who's nice in the paint as well. So yeah, Ryan Dodge, really good at getting rebounds for them last season, came up big in defensive plays throughout the year. And then Brennan Hopkins, he made big-time threes in that sectional run that you really didn't see coming, and he just kind of had that clutch of gene at times. So it's definitely going to be fun to watch. We'll be back with those interviews. So I'm sitting down now with two of the captains on this Victor basketball squad, Garrett Claire and Cam Ryan. You guys have been playing basketball for a long time together now, and last year was really just a special season. Just talk about what went into all the things that you did outside of the season and how you went into that season and you were so prepared to make a deep state run. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of preparation. Uh, it's been a lot of years coming. We've been working hard for a while, but we're just trying to put last year behind us and focus on this year now. Yeah, I would agree. It went past basketball with last year's team for sure. Uh, we had Team dinners were always really, really fun. You no, know, we did sleepovers as well. We just, As a team, we bonded really well together, and I think that translated really well into the basketball court. Yeah, and Cam, you're gonna. This is a little diff, bit of a different season for you. You had that ACL injury in lacrosse season. You're playing Syrac You're playing for Syracuse, the Division One there next year. I know it's a different approach with your mindset. How has this been a different preparation for basketball season for you this year? And when are you looking to get back into play? You know, I'm not trying to put any like specific time time limit on it right now. Um, just taking it day by day, trying to get one percent better every day. But um, yeah, you know, PT's going well. I don't. My expectations are to make it back at some point during the season, but it's just whenever I feel mentally and physically comfortable to be back on the court. What are you doing this year, and what is your guys' goal? Obviously, you had the 1978 bracelets. If nobody knows that, you wore those around. That was just something that you had as a whole team goal. Get back to sectionals, win sectionals, beat Fairport, and you did. Now, what's the approach and what's the goal this year, and how are you going to get back to that promised land? You know, we're just trying to string every practice, one practice at a time together, and then in the games, you know, we're just trying to trust our teammates, always trust what the coaches put in for us, and hope the outcome falls in our favor. Well, thanks for sitting down with me, guys. These are two seniors that you're going to see a lot of on this basketball season. Well, now I'm sitting down with Coach Tyler Roberts of the Victor Blue Devils. You took your team to a place last season that they haven't been since 1978. Just talk about the testament of that team and what went into that approach. Yeah, it was a great team, and uh, I think the approach was just try to get 1% better every day, and I'm really proud of that group for embracing that approach. And, you know, a lot of the players, I was just talking to Garrett and Cam, and they're, they're so strong about get 1% better. It's play-by-play. Play. It's next play mentality. And that's how you guys have built your basketball program. How are you going to continue to do that this year? Yeah, I think our approach is to not worry about championships. Our approach is really just to worry about each day individually and show up and control the controllables. You guys obviously lost some seniors from last year that played big spots. I know you got a little bit of a younger team this year. Obviously, the senior class is very good, but... What can you say about this group that you're confident in compared to last year? Yeah, uh, you know, I don't want to compare this group to last year's group, but I can say that this group is very committed, and I'm very proud of the work they put in in the offseason to give us a chance to be successful this year. Well, Coach, thanks for sitting down with me. A lot of people in Victor, they call it Tyler Roberts Court. I know it's the Carl A. Palumbo Gymnasium, but you have had such a success, and congratulations on a great season last year. Thanks, Michael. Look forward to the best. Tonight, the Blue Devils face off against the Penfield Patriots. This is a game we talked about last year. They beat them twice. Penfield obviously trying to get revenge here tonight. Yeah, Penfield's going to come in hungry. They lost twice last year. One of the games was by one. Um, so, yeah, it should be a really good game. Penfield's going to be hungry. And you know what? When I, my prediction going into this game, Victor didn't have the best shooting night against Niagara Falls in that first game. It's an away environment. Really hectic for them. Here at home, I think the crowd is really going to make a difference. And I got the Blue Devils getting the win. They didn't lose in the Whites last year, and I think that's going to continue in this season. Yeah, I think Penfield's going to come in hungry. But I think to the delight of this packed, sold-out Victor crowd, that the Victor Blue Devils take it against the Penfield Patriots here tonight. Here, the Victor faithful love it. Noah, with your pick, where are you yeah, going? I think Victor's going to continue their streak. I think they're going to continue their run. I'm taking Victor in this game. Yeah. It'll be a fun one to watch. You can see this game. We're going to have it on CR Sports. And it's going to be a great game for the Blue Devils. A great game. A great environment. And you see this crowd. They're ready to be there. 
and a really good home environment for the Blue Devils all last season. Expect that to continue tonight. Michael Ricky, alongside Carson French and Noah Herniker, we thank you for tuning into this edition of the Victor Voice with a little bit of a collaboration with my own CR Sports. And, yeah, big producers behind this. Noah did a great job with our whole thing. And the Victor Voice, Mr. Coughlin, we thank you for allowing us to set this up and having these people here. And then, obviously, you guys that came and showed up. It's going to be fun. And for Garrett Clare and Cam Ryan, we thank you. And same with Tyler Roberts. This is Michael Ricky of the Victor Voice signing off. Well, Ethan, we're here to back in the Carl A. Palumbo Gymnasium at Victor Senior High School to start off this second half with Victor on top, 27 to 25. And it's been the Garrett Clare show for the Blue Devils. 15 points. He's the number 15. It's 15-15. It's, it's an easy storyline, Michael. He's doing all the scoring for him. He's taking care of possessing the ball. He brings it up the court sometimes. Sometimes he runs the break. And you see him hustling up and down. I don't even think he's come out of the game yet. <laughs> it's an all-around unbelievable performance by Claire. And, you know, you saw this last week. I, I feel like I've said this 100 times now, but 31 points last week against Webster Thomas, seven threes. He's done it differently this time. We'll see if he gets hot from three in this one. And we're all ready to start off this second half. Blue Devils with the basketball. And it's 27-25. So Hopkins... Over to Claire. Dake down low to Leonard. Leonard driving inside against McCarthy. McCarthy's been that shot blocker. Hopkins, a three. It won't go. Rebound Dake. The putback won't fall. And McCarthy wins that battle on the boards. Natalie almost traveled. No call. And over and back is the call. And it's a turnover for the Patriots. And who else was that caused by but Garrett Claire? He jumped in the passing line, made the point guard second guess his decision, and he traveled. And, he went over, and it was over and back. A little double turnover. So now Victor basketball once again. Leonard setting a screen on Natale. Claire in the corner. Couldn't get a shot off. Oh, behind the back to Leonard down low. No shot yet. Claire, it's his bucket, and it's been his night. 29-25. Garrett, Claire, are you kidding me? Unbelievable pass. Unbelievable finish. Unselfish basketball from both Leonard and Claire. So now it's Hofer down low, trying to answer. It won't fall. Good D by Dake. Leonard pushing the pace. Johnson drives inside. Oh, and Dake a three. It's good. That is Victor basketball at its finest. Johnson passes up a possible three-pointer and finds a better look for Owen Dake. And it's a rare Owen Dake three. That is not his game, but he can have it fall. And Hofer, the mid-range, no good. Rebound Claire. Victor in transition, going fast. Claire going straight ahead, finding Hopkins. Hopkins, it's good again. Timeout, Penfield. 34-25. Seven straight points for the Blue Devils. You know, it's explosive basketball. We had seven early points, but it's methodical. That's the difference between Victor and Penfield. You, had, you saw a forced shot from Hofer, but then you saw an easy, no-look pass from Claire, a simple layup. A, a, a one more pass for a three-pointer. There's the difference in the style of play, and I think it's going to continue to grow this lead for Victor if they continue to play this way. This has been a carbon copy so far between the Victor-Webster-Thomas game and the Victor-Penfield game. The Blue Devils came out scorching hot in the second half against the Titans, and the same thing has happened here tonight against the Patriots. A 7-0 run to start off this half in a minute 30. What else could you ask for? We'll see what the changes are for the Patriots. Coming into the game is Gabriel Reyes. So Emling on the inbound to Natale, taking it up the court for Penfield. McCarthy, deed up by Dake. Down low, stolen away by Leonard. Good D by Nick Leonard. Finding Hopkins, Hopkins driving inside. Going to go down low for Dake. It won't fall. Gorgeous pass by Hopkins. Oh, and it's now Reyes in transition for the Patriots. Claire trying to guard two people. And a beautiful layup by Gabriel Reyes. But Victor going right back there. And it's Dake. What a pass by Claire. There's the push in the floor. They didn't think about the fact that they just got scored on and turned the ball over. They came right back down and answered with two points. 
So Zarzicki over to McCarthy at the top of the screen. It's Natale, guarded by Leonard. Reyes, and it's stolen away. Another Penfield turnover, and another. And there's another turnover, but this is on Griffin Hopkins as Reyes was right there to get the ball back for the Patriots. Natale in the corner, Zarzicki working against Johnston. McCarthy going right over Nick Leonard, and it falls. 29-36, but Victor going fast, and they're not in defense. Clear. Count, Count it. it. Wow. It's the same thing I said last possession. It's a carbon copy. You just saw they, they have a mental error on the back end, and they just immediately push the floor and capitalize. Penfield was not ready for that level of pace. Claire goes up strong, settles through contact. This will be for 20. That's unbelievable. We're almost three minutes into this second half. And it looks like another He will have huge with this night. bucket more than half of Victor's points. And there it is. And only nine behind the entire Penfield team. It's an unbelievable game so far for Claire. So Penfield now. McCarthy. This is another steal. Griffin Hopkins, great defense, going down the court fast. This second half has been an explosion of offense for the Victor Blue Devils. And the lead is now up to 12. And there's the timeout. I even saw fans behind us calling for a timeout from Coach. And he answers the call. Everything you could ask for and more for this Victor, from this Victor Blue Devil squad. 41-29, 4 minutes and 51 left of this third quarter. Victor, they're hot. We come back, and the Blue Devils with a 12-point lead, 41-29, and it's Patriot basketball. Penfield needs a spark here. they got to come out of the timeout hot if they want to stay in this game. And Victor not looking to settle, still trying to create turnovers, and there is almost a near steal as Hopkins is playing incredible defense in the second half. A drive inside by Natalie. He's going to draw the foul, and he will go to the line. McCarthy came down a little odd there. Looked like he grabbed for his left knee, but he seems to be okay. These are easy points. Penfield has to have these. In a game where you're down 12 and the team just came out hot. And the first one doesn't fall. And Ethan, you're right. These are much needed three throws where you really, you can't buy a bucket, it feels like. You haven't seen Penfield shoot the ball much in the second half. It's really just been turnovers. Turnover after turnover after turnover and fast break after fast break after fast break for the Blue Devils. Claire up top to Hopkins. Fakes the pass, goes down low, finding Owen Dake. What a pass by Griffin Hopkins. Dake's free layup won't fall. And now it's Natale going the other way, going to Zarzicki in the corner. Claire's right there on the defense to slow down the Penfield attack. Emling on the layup. It won't go. Rebound Johnson. And here's Victor trying to push the pace. And that's a little overzealous as it's intercepted and grabbed by Zarzicki. With this pace of play, you're going to see plays like that. Natale over to Emling. Moxley to McCarthy in the middle, guarded by Leonard. And Zarzicki on the outside. They switch. Leonard on Zarzicki. It's Johnson over on Natale. Picking up his dribble. What a pass and catch by McCarthy. Blocked by Dake. 
That's help defense right there. He slid from the wing. Helped out on the mismatch. And that's what Dake brings to this game. He's in here to be that defensive presence. And a defensive presence that Victor really had last year in Ryan Dodge. And, you know, watching this team play, they're looking for Owen Dake to really step up into that role. Yeah, Ryan was a long guy who could guard all five positions, and Dake seems to be taking on that role. And it's a shot clock violation for the Patriots as Arziki could not get it to go. And it's Blue Devil basketball once more. <laughs> Colin Kubrich back in the game for the Blue Devils. I wonder if Victor starts to slow it down here. Do they settle in with the 11-point lead, or do they continue to push the pace and grow it? I think it really depends how Penfield secures the ball on offense. If the turnovers keep coming, they're going to continue to push the pace. That is their game. Outside of Claire, three. It's good. Garrett Claire from downtown, and the Blue Devil lead is up to 14. It's automatic off his hand. You don't even have to question it anymore. The hip, hip, hooray chance fall here at Victor. A tradition. Green driving on Leonard, draws a foul and count the bucket. Jackson Green with a chance for three. Leonard a little upset with the call, and I, I have to say I kind of agree with him. I think his hands were up, he was moving back. But you know, this is the kind of stuff you're gonna get when the refs are involved. So Brendan Shannon back in the game for Victor. As Leonard, who drew the foul, he'll come out, take a little bit of a rest. And it's Green at the line with a chance for three. I have to say, Michael, you just talked about Shannon. I think that this, the guard depth that Victor has and the, the, the push of pace that they can bring off the bench is a huge advantage that we just can't see from the Patriots. Here is Shannon, trying to find Leonard. It's a little bit behind him. Hard foul on Claire. Real hard foul. Moxley just kind of ran into him hard. They're doing anything they can to stop him. He's up to 23 at this point. It's the second foul for the Patriots in this half. And it's Victor basketball with a fresh shot clock. Hopkins. Driving in the middle, now on the outside, going against Moxley. A little bit of a push off, and they're going to call it. That's an offensive foul. That's his number four. That is number four on Griffin Hopkins, and he's coming out of the game as Owen Dake comes back in. You know, I, I like the substitution. I feel bad for Hopkins having to come out, but if you saw before, it seemed they had four guards on the floor. And Kubrich, you don't have your biggest big man. you got to bring out Dake here. you got to keep the size on the floor. Although and that doesn't have McCarthy. And Ethan, that might be the last we see from Griffin Hopkins in this third quarter. So it's Emling, guarded by Secker. Good defense there. Kubrich on the perimeter, guarding Zarzicki. Zarzicki on the drive. It's blocked. A combination of Dake and Kubrich on the block, and it's Claire in transition for the Blue Devils. Claire going right by Emling. Claire with a little step, and it's stolen away by Jackson Green. Here's Moxley. Trying to go fast for the Patriots. Good D by Brendan Shannon. But Moxie with a spin, and it's in. Count the bucket and the foul. A little bit of a run here from the Patriots. And it's not a double-digit lead no longer for the Blue Devils. As it's 44-35 to 35 with a chance to make it an eight-point game. You know, you've seen the runs from both sides, and they've been caused by the opposing team's turnovers. It isn't just one-sided basketball. It's it's almost the other team shooting themselves in the foot and giving Penfield or Victor the chance to capitalize. Moxley can't capitalize on the chance for three. It's down low to Dake, the pass from Secker. And he was a little over eager there. It's tipped out of bounds and it'll retain with the Blue Devils. You see Colin Kubrich, a veteran on this team, just signaling. Let's calm down. Let's calm down. And that's something I think the Blue Devils need right now. They got really excited and fast in transition early in the second half. We'll see what they do here. Oh, it's what a play. You can't draw it up any better. Leonard right back to Claire on the inbound. And that's another bucket for Garrett. Those two work well so together. Emling to Zarzicki. Zarzicki a three. He shoots it a lot. And it's a rebound by Leonard. Well, Leonard dribbling himself. Driving inside, finding Kubrich. Kubrich thinks about a shot. Now he drives, gets fouled. Good job by Colin Kubrich right there. It's a third foul for Penfield. It's a veteran move. He talked about it being a veteran on the team. He passed open, open three, decided to drive, drew a foul, and now Victor gets to reset. 
reset the offense, more time on the shot clock. It's a perfect opportunity. Well done by Kubrich. So Hofer back in the game. Steinbeiner back in the game for the Patriots. It's down low to Dake. And it's another foul on Penfield. And Steinbeiser comes right back in, and it's another foul on him. And you can't see it on the broadcast, but the Penfield... The same play, Ethan! It's Claire again! And as I was just mentioning before I interrupted, Michael, was the Penfield coach was out at center court again in the middle of the play there. Surprise, no technical. They can't guard that play. It's Claire on the inbound, right back... It goes to Leonard. Leonard goes right back to him. It's a block by Dake. And a charge taken by Leonard. That's Dake's third block of the game, and I believe his third of the second half. And that's the fifth foul for the Patriots. So the next foul, you'll see a free throw shooter for the Blue Devils. Well, luckily for Penfield, we only have a minute left in this third quarter. One minute left, as you just mentioned, and it's Leonard. As Claire sets a screen outside, they work it. It's Johnson for three, yes! You bet. You see Leonard's almost running the point in this third quarter. He has three assists on the last three buckets. It's unbelievable passing for the big man. And the victor three-point shooting has come to life here in the second half. Date guarding Emling. Steinbeiser. Drives inside, shoots a nice mid-range shot. It won't fall for him. Rebound Johnson after he just made his three. He's pushing the pace. He's driving inside. Goes off the back of Emling. And timeout for Victor. It's a veteran timeout by Coach Roberts. He saw RJ almost falling out of bounds, and he quickly came to the timeout. Luckily, the ref was standing right in front of him. That was a big three by RJ right there. You know, He's a freshman. He's a young kid. You can only imagine that he's going to get better and better as the season progresses. It takes serious composure. He shot that corner three right in front of the Devil's Den. A full student section here, and he had complete composure. He hit it, and he moved on. No celebration, no nothing. That's veteran basketball from a freshman player. Indeed it is. And Victor now, lead, grew back up to 16. Just when we thought, oh, Penfield, they could get back in. They have a shot. If the lead was down to nine, could have been eight. Victor answers right away. I think Penfield's starting to get defla de deflated. You look over at their bench, they've got a lot of guys sitting down. They're kind of slouching in their seats. They've lost that energy that they had in the first and second quarter. And being an away crowd, there just isn't the support that Victor can draw. And you look, look at the difference. There's a starch difference between the Penfield fans and the Victor fans at this moment. It's almost like they've lost all life in which you saw in the first half where it was really a close game. Penfield led for most of it. The fans were totally into it, and they were very loud in this away environment for them. So it's Claire with one shot, guarded by Hofer up top. Hofer with tough defense. Claire just going back and forth. And another timeout for Victor. Look at the Penfield coach as he slams his clipboard into the bleachers as he is angry at the officials. We may hear another TM up chant from the Victor student section. And you hear it right on cue, Ethan. And I'm really surprised we haven't seen one yet because he has clearly shown his displeasure with his official staff. And when we saw them, they're not afraid to issue technicals. They did it very early to Coach Tyler Roberts. I, I almost wonder, is it because it's a 16-point game going into the fourth quarter? Do they not feel it's necessary to give Victor any more help? It's, with, it's, especially with 13 seconds left of this quarter, too. Yeah, I, I, he's already visibly upset. A technical clearly would make him more upset. I just think it causes a more hostile environment that these refs, a two-man squad, are just not looking to handle right now. Obviously, we don't know the words that are being exchanged in these interactions. So there could be one extreme to another, as conversations typically go <laughs> in a sport environment. Sure. But You love to see the passion. Exactly, exactly. You know, he's into it. That's all you can ask of a high school coach. Someone who cares about the players, who cares about the game, and wants to win. And he's put that on full display here tonight. On the other hand, Coach Roberts, he clearly didn't like what was happening there. He didn't expect the hard pressure from Hofer right on the back of Claire. Hofer showing it again. Ten seconds left. 
Secker on the wing, up top to Dake. Dake, Claire in the corner, trying to get him a shot. Garrett Claire just moving, and how does he make that shot? Everything has gone his way. Victor with the 53 to 35 lead as we go into the fourth here on CR Sports. Stay with us as Garrett Claire is put on a show. And we're back here as we enter the fourth quarter. The headline of that previous third quarter is that Garrett Clare had 14 points for the Blue Devils and the Patriots, Penfield Patriots as a whole, 10. Clare has taken over this game from the start to the start of this fourth quarter. So 53 to 35 as you see Gabriel Reyes with the ball for the Patriots guarded by Johnson. It's Hofer on the outside. Driving inside. He has not had easy shots, but he gets this one to fall with a chance for three. Really well done. He attacked that big, lengthy Victor defense. And he came in with power, with aggression, and he, he converted. So Penfield trying to implement what Victor did to start off their third quarter. We'll see if Penfield can do it in the fourth. Hofer's free throw won't fall, but it's a rebound for the Patriots and Emling. Green with it. He loses possession, but it was knocked out by a Victor defender, and it will retain Patriots basketball. We'll see how this possession goes. Maybe missing that free throw wasn't the worst thing in the world. They get possession back a chance at two. Green over to Reyes. Steinbeiser down low to Green. That's a mismatch on Claire, but he can't get his free layup to fall. He gets this one. There it is. Missed the free throw. You think if it's a costly mistake, and they end up with an extra point. So a four-point possession for Penfield. And now Victor trying to start off their fourth quarter in the scoring column. It's Claire on the outside, guarded by Reyes. Oh, it's the easy right from Claire. Another bucket for him. And you hear the Penfield crowd calling for defense, but they just cannot handle Garrett Claire tonight. And how many points is that on the game for him? That's 31 for Claire. And what did we see last week? 31 from Claire. It has been a continuation of Garrett Claire dominance here in this game. And it's starting to, to become almost a pattern. It's not a surprise when he puts up a 30 ball. Here's Dake over to Johnson. It's Hopkins at the top of the arc. He goes to the outside. Now back to Dake. Victor running their offense in the, in the corner. It's Johnson. Claire just working around contact. Leonard driving inside, goes through contact, and the bucket. It's a tough bucket from Leonard. He drove from the top as their center. He ripped through, found the contact, and had a nice touch floater. Reyes guarded by RJ. Down low to Green. Stolen by Claire. He says cookies. Going the other way. It's Leonard to Hopkins in the air, and alley-oop. No, but Leonard with the rebound and the putback. Yes. Timeout, Penfield. And you know, Michael... That was an unbelievable play by Leonard. It really was. He follows the shot. He throws a lob, a lob of all things, to, to Griffin. And when Griffin misses it, he's there to follow it. Smart basketball. That's high IQ plays. For a minute there, I thought we were about to see a high school alley-oop with the layup version, obviously not the slam dunk version that you see in professional basketball and college basketball. But it is a 20-point lead for the Blue Devils. And we can't say it enough. Garrett Clare with 31 points, a continuation of his, dominant, of his dominance. 
and everything's fallen for him you know, and, and just, this Blue Devil team in the second half. It just looks easy. Everything he does just looks fluid and simple. He doesn't go hard with the ball. He's and just It's just simple. And we can tell you it's not. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not. Especially this is a Penfield team that was close to again, beating the Blue Devils last year. One was a one-point win for Victor. And th this, this, was been, this has been a close matchup at times. They just they had beaten Webster Thomas by 20 points. Yeah. A team that Victor beat by 15. Right. This was not going in. We didn't expect a 20-point blowout. But time and time again, we say it over and over. You're going to hear it week to week. It's the Garrett Clare Show here at Victor. And, you know, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that he's got to be in the AGR Player of the Year conversation in Section 5. Obviously, there's very good players all around the section, but he truly is one of the best reigning Monroe County Division I Player of the Year. And he's just getting better and better. Hofer over to the Natale. This Victor defense, that could have been over and back. They won't call it. It's a Zarzicki three, and it falls in the corner. Great shot there by Christian Zarzicki. He's been a sharpshooter tonight. He's taking a lot of shots. He's not afraid to shoot the ball clearly. He shouldn't be if he's hitting those. McCarthy following Nick I, Leonard. I just don't know if that call is necessary in that scenario. It just didn't seem like a ton of contact. We've seen more throughout this game. We have a 17-point differential. Just felt unnecessary. Another inbound that works beautifully for the Blue Devils. It's Hopkins down low to Leonard. Leonard's layup won't fall as it's Natale to Reyes. Here's Natale. Back over to Moxley. It's McCarthy in the middle of the Victor defense. It's Hofer driving inside and tries to get a shot off. He does, but it's rebounded by Owen Dake. Tough buckets all night for Hofer. And, oh, and Hofer with a hard foul. Let's see what happens here. Tempers flaring him. in this game. And Hopkins came in and pushed him after the play. Hofer with a clear shove on Johnson. And now we got coach at center court, over center court. Now towards the three-point the three point line and the third tee him up chant from the Victor Sudan. And team. I would be surprised if there isn't a flagrant issue here. That was unnecessary from Hofer. And the officials are saying, get your team under control. Griffin Hopkins came at the defense of his freshman teammate, and for good reason. That's just frustration from Hofer. He hasn't, he just had, like we said, he had 31 against Webster Thomas. He had 16 against Fairport, and he just hasn't found that ease tonight. And it's because of how strong this Victor defense is, and he's visibly frustrated. We'll see what the officials do here. They're in conversation about what to do. And with this being a 17-point game. Is it necessary? It really isn't, points-wise, but, Ethan, I believe that this has to go against Hofer. You have to show something going on, and it's going to be a conversation between the coaches. It's clearly a foul. I think it's just to what degree. Are they going to give him a technical? Are they going to give him a flagrant? Right. Is it just going to be a foul on the floor? I think from this point, it's the refs determining how bad do they want to punish Hofer for being frustrated. As you can see in this conversation... As we have a good vantage point, Coach Tyler Roberts obviously trying to plead his case and defend his player as he got shoved about five feet and went sliding on the gym floor. Freshman Randy Johnson, he just, you know, he looks calm. He does. He just got shoved to the floor in a varsity basketball game as a freshman, yet he's up, he's drinking water, he's laughing with his coaches and his teammates. It's pure composure. Oh, he wasn't mad. <laughs> no, he, he took that fall like a champ. He got up. He said, all right, whatever. We're winning by 17. I got, I got them all rattled. That's their star player in Penfield. So it was Griffin Hopkins control. who came to the defense, and that's no surprise. He is that player. He's that kind of jolt of energy at times. This Victor basketball team where it's mostly 1% better, play by play. We're all trained this way. You've got a little bit of a flaring temper in Griffin Hopkins at times, but that works to Victor's advantage a lot of the time as well. Absolutely. You say he has the he has the temper. He also has the energy. He right. has the passion for the game. The temper isn't just because he's an angry kid. No, you need because so, he loves temp, basketball. Temper is a word that we can use for it usually as a negative connotation, but I'm using it as a universal word here. We can say that Hopkins just has energy. He's he has he's into the game. He's going to be mad. He's going to be he's going to go through all the emotions. He's still standing on the sideline. Right. You could tell how much he cares for his teammates about the game that's being played. I think they're just going to leave it on the floor. So a common foul issued. We still have one ref discussing with the score ta scorer's table. Yeah. 
We'll see if we see that gorgeous inbound play for the fourth time this game. Tipped away. Not as pretty. It's Victor basketball still. Now they're on the side of the court, not in the backcourt. Claire in the corner. Claire finding Leonard. Tight defense by the Patriots. It's Kubrich at the top. He's guarded by Moxley. Kubrich now in a little bit of trouble, but a foul on Penfield. It's another weak foul. I don't know. He's ripping the ball through. I'm interested to see how long it takes for Coach Tyler Roberts to start to, you know, empty his bench. You see a 17-point game with four minutes, five minutes, excuse me, to go in the fourth quarter. I'm sure you've got a lot of guys on that bench that are itching to play. Dake in the corner on the inbound from Claire. Kubrich against Moxley. They're going to reset at the top. But Johnson going against Arzicki. Quick crossover. Johnson on the inside. They're going to call a travel as he slid. Yep, that pivot foot slid forward. He looks a little upset with it, but once again, he's showing composure. You can hear the We Want Rondo chance. Hayden near pass on the bench towards ACL last basketball season. The fans are itching for him to come back. He's a culture guy for sure. Yeah. He's a talented basketball player, but he's a culture guy too. You see the fans, there's 100 plus people here. They're all calling for his name. It's a well-loved kid. So Penfield basketball with Natale at the top. Working against Claire. It's Arzicki against Johnson to Moxley. Here's McCarthy at the top with Leonard there. Quick passing. Now it's Natale going against Leonard. Moxley, that's going to be a two, and it's good. Smooth stroke for Moxley. Johnson loses the ball. The good D by Zarzicki. And he's got to find a sure ball handler. Zarzicki with great defense. And did he call timeout? He did. Smart timeout. Protecting his player. And I got to give it to Zarzicki. I think he's having an underrated game here tonight. He's been all over the floor. He's been on the floor a lot. He's been shooting the ball well from deep. Plays good defense. Has that range, like you said, and he's been a bright spot in which it's been a dark game for the Penfield Patriots. We'll step aside. We'll be back shortly after this timeout. So we're back here at the Carl A. Palomo Gymnasium inside Victor Senior High School. Victor leads 59 to 44, four minutes and two seconds left of this contest. And it's the Penfield Patriots with the ball. Natale over to Moxley. Emling driving inside, trying to get something to go. It's an errant pass and it's gonna be a turnover. It's gonna be Victor basketball. Emling and McCarthy were just out of sync there. Yeah. I don't know whose fault it was. Maybe someone was supposed to be in a different spot, not how they drew it up, but it's been another turnover, so many turnovers in this game for the Patriots, and it's a, it's a testament to this Victor defense. They're so sound, they play so well as a unit. It's what you've seen for years and years now. Absolutely, because we got a spill on the court over by the Penfield bench. We got a towel down, we'll clean that up. And I'll take the break to highlight someone we haven't talked a lot about tonight, but he's a star player for Victor, is Nick Leonard. Right. He's got four assists here in the fourth quarter. He's playing with composure. He's passing the ball. He's not been a ball hog. He hasn't been looking for his own shots. He's playing simple, smart, and unselfish basketball here tonight. Another veteran leader for this team. Yeah, it's, he's been on the team for forever, it feels like now. Let's see if you can get this cleaned up. They're looking for another towel. Second towel here. A second towel in action. <laughs> I mean, I think we've played two minutes of basketball in 15 minutes with the Hofer foul and now a, sp a spill and the game a timeout. Was, it was coming fast. It was going fast. Yeah. Like every game has, it has its ebbs and flows of speed of play. Looks like we've got it settled. The floor is ready, and so are we. 
Leonard in the quarter of the court in Penfield territory with big Jake McCarthy guarding him. Great pass by Dake over to Johnson. Johnson finding Claire. Good grab by Garrett Claire. It was a tough one there. Natale on the defense. It's Leonard working against McCarthy. Johnson on the outside is Arzicki. He's played good defense tonight against him. Secker trying to drive against Moxley. He's going to have to give it off to Leonard. And Leonard driving inside. Can't get the layup to fall. Had to take a shot there. I don't mind it. Moxley with a nice move on Dake. The mid-range won't go for him. Over the back is called on the Patriots. Another great fourth quarter play from Leonard. He saw the help defense. Hands up. He stayed steady and he forced the pull up for Moxie and it just didn't go. He's going to shoot. Yeah, with five fouls now, it's going to send a free throw shooter and Nick Leonard to the free throw line. Should be number six for shooting one and one. Oh yeah, it's number six, yeah. Our scoreboard is seems to be messed up here from the scores table. I think even there's a new rule in high school basketball this year where it's five might be the max that they put on there and they just kind of treat it as a double bonus. Okay. So a little bit different from the past as you're going to see Leonard get a second shot. Yeah. All right. You know, it's a 15-point game. Victor's played an unbelievable second half. But I have to say, as they play better teams down the stretch, the free throw shooting has to be fixed. Someone has to step up, and they have to make these shots. They're free throws. It's yeah. supposed to be an easy two points every single time. And that's what is obviously worked on throughout the season, playing more basketball. A lot of these guys, they play multiple sports, so getting back into the flow of basketball season is really going to help bring that free throw percentage up. Emling on the drive, it's going to be a foul on Kubrich. It's a strong drive. He went up hard through the foul. Nice play by Emling. So Emling started off scoring for the Patriots tonight with a three. And now he's back at the line. He makes the score 60 to 45. Emling's second free throw doesn't fall, but a rebound by Hofer. He's fouled and won. It's a tough play as he enters double digits with 11 tonight by my count. So this is a chance now for four points on this possession for the Patriots if Hofer can convert on the free throw. This would cut the lead to 12. And Ethan, you were mentioning not too long ago, when are the kids that don't get a lot of PT going to come into the game? And I feel like right now you can't really do that if your coach Tyler Roberts says Penfield's gotten a little bit of momentum and they've scored a few points here. If they can get this, it'll be a 12-point game, and Victor's going to look to answer. And it is. Through the noise of the crowd, stay strong. Claire, guarded by Natale. Claire driving inside with the left hand. Now he's going to kick it out to Johnson. That's a ticky-tack foul called on Steinbeiser. Seen a lot of those tonight. A lot of calls on the floor. So Johnson's going to go to the line to shoot too. It's the last thing Penfield wants. These, I mean, maybe not. They're supposed to be free throws, but we've <laughs> talked about how Victor cannot convert. Let's see how RJ does here. The first free throw from Johnson is good. Composure from the freshman. I don't think there's anybody in this gym, Ethan, that's more pleased about the making of that free throw than you. <laughs> no, maybe Coach Tyler Roberts. He probably rivals that. 61-48. Two minutes and 48 left in this contest. Johnson's second free throw is good. And the lead back up to 14 for Victor. Johnson checks out. Kubrich in the game. So is Secker. So it's Antale. Zarzicki in the corner, guarded by Kubrich. It's Green. Oh, just knocked back by Leonard. He stays with Green. He had an open cutter. Good move by Hofer on the inside. Layup falls, a little finger roll, beautiful by Trevor Hofer. 
Another bucket for him. That's his second in a row for this Penfield offense. And Claire going to down the court fast with Natale on defense. It's a tough bucket from Hofer. Over the tall Nick Leonard, a strong defensive player. And there's a foul called on Zarzicki. It's another ticky-tacky foul, like you said. We've been talking about it all night. It seems like it's a lot of the same storylines. Now, that one I would agree. I think that's a foul. I'm not criticizing the refs here. Right. But it's just, it's been a lot. You know, we're not seeing on the scoreboard, as you mentioned, the new rule. We're not seeing over five fouls. Right. But I can imagine that Penfield's pushing ten at this point. First one falls for Kubrich. That's his third point of this contest. You hear the Victor team communicating so well. There's a little bit of confusion with who is guarding Christian Zarzicki. Justin Rosello, people call him J-Row, back in the game now. To play some defense and close out this one. For the Blue Devils, up 14. Tipped by Dake. Grabbed back by Emling. Zarzicki. Driving inside, he has a lane, and he gets hacked. Hard foul. Up quick again, though. He popped up fast. We talked about him earlier. He's having a strong game, a quiet game. He's here by my count. I believe he has. I believe he has nine, maybe twelve. He's three or four three pointers this game. He's going to the line, doing really well defensively. The free throw spins in. And now five fouls for both teams in this game. It's Secker trying to get a find a lane. He does. Dake down low to Rosello. And Leonard with the bucket. Continues, That's as easy as it's going to get. Continues an unbelievable fourth quarter from Leonard. He's holding this team together. Zarzicki falls down. Trying to D him up as Secker. Emling, the drive inside, trying to get a bucket. And it just got loud in here because Hayden Nearpass, otherwise known as Rondo, is about to check into this basketball game. It's going to be Penfield basketball, but here comes Hayden Nearpass. It's been a long recovery for him. And to the delight of this Victor crowd, he is playing basketball for again for the first time in over a year. You know, I've seen him at PT all, all this past summer. You know, he works hard. You see that knee brace on the right knee. It was a bad tear. It was a bad injury. But here he is. He's back. He's been resilient, and the crowd loves it. Also checking in with Hayden near pass is Alex Long, Colin Barber, Ryan Gill, and Brody Burgess. Those are the five on the court right now for Victor. Man, it would be unbelievable to see Rondo put up a bucket here. This crowd would just go if, absolutely ballistic. If he puts up a bucket, it's about to get as loud as you've seen tonight. Steinbeiser can't get it to fall. Rebound Barber. Long has great handles for this Victor team. Here's near pass with the ball. There's no. a foul as Burgess was just hit right in the back. Now I don't know if the audio caught it, Michael, but our Victor student section is singing a song for, that's come from a Conor McGregor press conference back in his fighting days. And either, you know, Rondo's Irish heritage, they're, they're drawing comparisons to one of the greatest fighters of all time. And this kid loves UFC like no other. If anyone knows him, Outside of his sports careers, you could say. Huge UFC fan. Probably the biggest UFC fan I've ever seen. Burgess misses his first free throw at the line. Second one also won't fall. It's a foul on Gill. And going to the line now for the Patriots. To shoot two. Is Rocco Barberi. The first free throw from Barberi is no good. The Victor student section is believing they have won, and I believe so as well. I think it's safe to say with a minute five left. So after this is all said and done, Victor will advance to two and one in the season. Penfield will fall to three and two. The free throw is good on the second attempt by Barberi. Long to near pass. Near pass to Burgess, another foul on McGraw. He's going to shoot. Number 
You can see the Victor team, they're trying to get Hayden the ball, trying to get him a shot. You can see the smile on his face as he stands at the block. But Kelsey McGraw, I have no part of it, just following Brody Burgess, time in and time out. Burgess's first free throw won't fall. You know, Michael, you talked about the support from the bench, and I think it speaks to the culture of Victor basketball. They're up fifth, they're up 14, excuse me, in a game that's clearly over, yet they just, they continue to stay into it. They continue to support their guys, and this crowd is still in the building. Steinbeiser's three is rebounded by Burgess. They're looking to get him the ball. It's long at the top. He's going to try to drive it inside, finding near pass. We'll see what he can do. He's just going to give this one off, play Victor basketball. Great ball movement to Barber, to Gill. It's long, spinning. Great handles he has. He gets tied up and a travel. Maybe the 12th of the game. There's Lots been a lot of them tonight. That was a slide again. I mean, you could just hear his name echo throughout this crowd. It's all we've heard for the last four or five minutes is just Rondo's name. And, you know, the great thing is, is Despite them wanting him to get a big bucket tonight, he's back, he's playing basketball again, and he's going to have a chance for the rest of the season to get one. Steinbeiser's jumper will go. It's 66 to 54. And Victor wins it. Their first home game of the season is a success as the Blue Devils win 66 to 54 off the back of Garrett Clare. Another unbelievable performance that he has had. This is as good as it gets from Claire, and this is Victor Basketball 101. It's his second straight 31-point game, textbook scoring, simple basketball. He does it with ease. He does it every way possible. He drives. He shoots the three. He does it from the charity stripe. It's just classic Garrett Claire basketball. Well, we thank you for joining us for this broadcast on Team One Sports and presented by CR Sports. And Ethan... Thank you for sitting down with me today. We I needed somebody to do this with. Obviously, Garrett is my partner with CR Sports. We're going to get him for an interview. He is the star player of the game tonight. There's no question about it. He's a man of many talents. I'm here filling it in his yeah. chair. I got to watch him play a great basketball game. I'm sure you're sick of hearing it already from us. But, you know, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored to sit down with you, to be here back in the stadium. I graduated last year. You know, I'm, I'm excited to watch some of my friends play the sport. Yeah. Great basketball game from Claire. Great call by you. This was excellent. We thank you for joining us here on CR Sports. Go follow us on Instagram. That's where you're going to see the Star Player of the Game interview with Garrett Clare. And saying so long from Victor Senior High School, I'm Michael Rickey alongside Ethan Adrid. We thank you for joining us here tonight.